Hi, my beauties. My name is Dr. Stephanie Kaplan. I'm a board certified fellowship trained cosmetic dermatologist in Newport Beach, California. And today I'm going to be dedicating a video to things that I've had done um, with respect to body contouring and minimally invasive procedures in the office. And also just kind of touching upon my diet, my exercise regimen, and you know, my lifestyle. Because a lot of you guys have asked me to do a video on this. I'm actually pretty shy when it comes to that kind of content. I usually, you know, ask you guys what you want me to hear, what you want me to talk about when it comes to new aesthetics procedures, new cosmetic dermatologic procedures or lasers or new skincare actives or discoveries and um, new things that are going on in the beauty industry with respect to cosmetic dermatology and laser medicine and things of that nature. But I've had so many people ask me in the comment sections like, tell us about your diet, your workout regimen. And I'm like, oh gosh, I'm flattered that they even care and that's amazing. So I'd rather, you know, kind of just dedicate a video just to that. But I also get asked a lot, you know, with body contouring non-invasive procedures that I recommend for my patients, which ones do I do? Um, whether it's like M Sculpt or Sculptra, Kybella, things of that nature, cool sculpting, I'll give my opinion on that too. So I um, just wanted to share this video with you guys because you've asked me to. And again, I'm a little bit shy, but I'm full disclosure, I don't have anything that I would ever hide from anyone. So I kind of think it's good to just talk about things that I do. And if you have any comments or suggestions, even for me in my comment sections, if you want to leave me a comment, drop a note and let me know what you think or share with us what you do or what your recommended exercise regimen is or treatments or procedures that you've had in the office that you've had a good or bad experience with. I want this to be a really safe and honest forum. Um, and our YouTube community, I think is amazing because as you know, all my content is non-sponsored um, in an industry that's heavily infiltrated with sponsored content and paid partnerships and under the table contracts and I just don't do any of that. I never have and I never will. So be sure to share this channel with anyone who wants non-sponsored content by board certified dermatologist because I feel that it's a rarity on YouTube and it's really important to kind of propagate that um, in a world where there's so much you know money and influence in marketing um, for the wrong reasons. And so I just will always be um, a voice of truth and honesty and authenticity and would like to you know propagate that as well. So the only way to grow though because I don't work with any companies um, is to just share this channel with friends or loved ones or family members who may find it useful and just grow organically um, by word of mouth and sharing this channel. So I appreciate your support. And without further ado, we'll go ahead and do a video and dive right into treatments I've had done in the office for body contouring, as well as my diet and exercise regimen and things that I do at age 40, almost 46. I'll be 46 next month, so I'm 45 years old now. And um, it's just been things that I've been kind of doing my entire life and things that I've had to adapt and change with the years as my career has changed and you know my life as a mom has changed and with the demands of my you know owning a business and running a practice have changed as well so hopefully this will find it useful but again I want it to be a back and forth so let me know what you guys are doing too what works for you if you have any criticism for me I'm happy to I'm open to that as well too so a lot of you guys ask about my diet um, and what I eat in a day and um, you know about my macros or my intake or what type of diet I adhere to and my life is a little bit atypical and it always has been. Um, and I think it's important to keep that in mind. What works for one person may not work or fit with the lifestyle of another. And my entire life up to this point, you know, has been on a journey. Like I knew I wanted to be a dermatologist when I was a little girl. I knew I wanted to be a physician and surgeon when I was very young. And, um, you know, my college experience was probably a lot different than many others. You know, I spent my entire college experience in the library and study, studying and grinding and working in a research lab and, you know, studying all the time and TAing classes. And, you know, I just spent a lot of my youth and my 20s and 30s working in a hospital, learning in school, educating. And um, because of that, um, it may not have been the healthiest, but on the other hand, it kind of was healthy. Um, unhealthy in the fact where a lot of the time I was sleep deprived, I was doing unintentional intermittent fasting. I would usually eat once a day, not because it was a trend at the time or recommended from a health perspective, but because in the hospital you have one chance to eat and the rest of the time you're on your feet, you know, working, seeing patients, rounding on your patients, in surgery, in the OR, studying for exams. I mean, it's just like a rat race. And if you're another physician watching this, you understand that's just kind of the life of a medical student and a resident and a fellow and a postgraduate 
fellow and you know it just has been always kind of my way of life to go with intermittent fasting so now it's a thing and now it's kind of recommended and it's trendy um, but I usually adhere to the 16-8 intermittent fasting regimen. So now, um, you know, depending on the day of the week, I work four days a week and, you know, I try to balance um, seeing patients in the office and doing procedures with, you know, being a mom to my two little kids, my young, my kids, and um, also just having creative time to educate and um, formulate skincare products for my skincare line, MD Air. That's my creative outlet. I love to do it. I love formulating and I work with a personal chemist and he and I create these beautiful, amazing products together and that's kind of my creative outlet too. So I'm balancing my time between, you know, my family, my work family and my creative kind of time, which makes me happy and it's something I'm super passionate about and something that I have a huge outlet of happiness through. I'm not only formulating skincare products, but doing videos like this on YouTube, doing educational videos, also being at the podium at different you know meetings and conferences, educating other doctors, other dermatologists, and also teaching the medical students and residents. So it's kind of a part of a whole piece of the puzzle, all these puzzle pieces that fit together and trying to find time to work out and adhere to a clean, healthy diet. Um, and getting sleep in also is, is has been something that I've always tried to balance and that balance kind of shifts depending on this phase of life that I've been in. So when I was in medical school, I would maybe eat once a day. I always really made an effort to eat clean and to not eat you know processed foods or junk foods, especially when you're a starving student who's studying and just really doesn't have time to meal prep or you know make you know healthy meals i would always put it as a priority to meal prep as best as i could and eat clean and adhere to a healthy diet and i usually was doing intermittent fasting back in the day because um, we didn't have much time um, where we weren't working or studying and um, it's kind of a unique situation um, being so young and being in that situation but i felt like intermittent fasting eating clean was kind of my my regimen and I didn't have a lot of time to work out I wasn't working out a lot I didn't have a lot of time to sleep which you know sleep deprivation obviously has its negative impacts on your health which wasn't good for me in my 20s but you know something that um, was just part of, of my life um, you know being a, in medical school and in residency working in a hospital over 80 hours a week with very minimal sleep very little time to you know meal prep or eat eat healthier eat clean you're basically eating hospital cafeteria food which I'd always you know go for the veggies and the fruit and um, drinking plenty of water and trying to you know take my supplements and, and live as healthy of a lifestyle as I could but in and of itself just grinding it out so hard and working and studying so hard and being so diligent and regimented really put exercise and working out as a priority and that's why I'm so obsessive about working out if you guys follow me on Instagram you know I work out at 5 a.m. every day five times a week well actually five times a week I usually take the weekends off because that's my time with my family and my kids um, but I'm really diligent about it now because I never was able to do that before you know I mean you were lucky if you had three hours outside the hospital usually which you'd have to drive home take a shower get a clean you know set of clothes and scrubs and get back into the hospital um, and then trying to work 80 hours a week with patient care and studying for exams you know for those of you who don't know dermatology is probably one of the hardest specialties to match and to get into as a medical student so you really have to be like the top of your class among very smart people um, it was a struggle for me but you know it really taught me the importance of time management and prioritizing what what came first and it was always you know eating clean and not being able to exercise and not being able to sleep that much, but kind of making up for it by, you know, working really hard and trying to take um, the best care of my body as I possibly could. Now that I'm older and now that I'm in, established in my career um, and I have my own practice and kind of have more time to balance what's important to me, um, I really make sure that, you know, working out is a priority and something that I will not give up. And I had to give it up earlier, you know, in my 20s and 30s, but now in my 40s, there's not a, a day that goes by that I, I will not be at the gym, get my full hour of workout in. And it makes me happy, not only from an overall health perspective, but it clears my mind. And um, it's something that I do, you know, five days a week. So I usually work out at 5 a.m. 
Um, it's the only protected time of my day because sometimes my afternoon will be a little unpredictable if my last patient of the day goes a little bit longer or if my kids have a lot of their activities, which they usually do after school, it will kind of cut into my workout time. So that's why I work out from five to six in the morning because that's the only time where the world is quiet, everybody usually is still sleeping, and I could just go to the gym or go to spin um, or do a run on the beach or a beach workout. We live on the beach. It's right there. You can see the ocean. Um, and that's my only protected time to really get my workout in. And if I don't get that, I'm just not whole all day long and so I, I do make it a priority but that's why I work out so early in the morning but you got to get it in whenever you can and prioritizing um, what's important to you I feel like um, is, is really important so working out definitely is something that I've done for myself and my body but almost just more later in life because it, it wasn't really a, an option for me um, when I was younger because of time limitations. So for me, on days I work, um, intermittent fasting works out really well actually with my schedule and I usually adhere to the 816 regimen. So I, my last meal of the day will usually be around two o'clock is when I, when I end my day seeing patients. I usually work nine to two um, because I usually take my kids to school work, see patients for about six hours straight, no break, which I love. It's my happy time seeing my patients and just interacting with them and doing procedures that I love and I'm passionate about. And then picking them up from school and then whatever the rest of the day entails, kids' activities or, you know, lectures that I have to give or, you know, um, administrative uh, meetings and things of that nature. But I usually have, you know, my early dinner slash lunch around 2 or 2.30 and then I usually don't eat for the remainder of the evening. I cook, you know, dinner usually for my family and um, I usually don't eat that I just kind of just hang out with them and have family time with them um, and make the meal but don't usually I usually skip out on dinner I had a trainer who recommended um, not eating after five o'clock and then I had another trainer who recommended just no, not eating carbs after two o'clock so I kind of incorporated that it works well for me and my regimen usually I'll eat two or two thirty and then I'm good for the night and I'm usually so busy that I'm distracted anyway um, and then um, sometimes I'll have tea before bed like a chamomile nighttime tea and then I go to bed and I wake up I love to work out usually while I'm fasting, um, especially because when I'm doing my cardio, usually when I go to the gym in the mornings at five, it's 30 minutes of cardio, 30 minutes of lifting, or I'll do spin or again, a beach workout, which is a beach run and then, you know, a beach workout on the sand, which is some resistance bands or, um, you know, weights. And then um, I usually eat at 6 a.m. after my workout because I like to work out before, I mean, I like to work out when I'm still fasting. Sorry, I'm distracted. Okay, okay, put your mind first. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. Okay, sorry, I got distracted. So usually when I work out, I like to be fasting. So I'm coming off of my 16 hour fast um, and when I work out, from five to six in the morning, I feel good about my workout. I feel that working out when you're fasting gives a more effective cardiovascular workout, more fat burning, um, and it just is more, it's just healthier, better for the body. And after my workout, I usually come home, it's usually around six or 6.15, um, and I usually wake my kids up at 6.30 or 6.45, and then I pack their lunches, get their breakfast ready, and get them off to school. Then I go into the office at 9 a.m., and I see patients um, for about six or seven hours straight, which I love and I don't eat or take a break during that time. My office staff usually takes a lunch break, but I don't break for lunch, I'm still fasting, and then I eat again after my last patient of the day is seen, and that's somewhere between two and 2.30, and then I go another 16 hours. So that's my eight, 16 uh, intermittent fasting regimen, and it works really well with my schedule um, when I'm working. Now on days where I'm not working, I take Fridays off and I'm off Saturday and Sunday for the weekends. I just kind of go with the flow and I'm usually with my family and I eat with them. And you know, if we go out somewhere, I'm not super picky, but I try to keep it clean. Sometimes I'll have to modify things if I order something off a menu. Um, and I avoid uh, dairy, gluten, um, and try to avoid inflammatory foods. So I try to eat as clean as possible, but I also don't want it to totally impact my life in a negative way where I can't eat dinner or you know spend time with my family but I'm really cognizant of what I put into my body because you are what you eat and um, it's a lifestyle change, habit and it's just being you know I think being healthy and mindful of what you're putting into your body is really important um, so I focus on you know healthy proteins and fats um, most of my protein comes from fish. I do eat chicken. Um, I'm not vegan and I do you know plant-based proteins um, nuts legumes and um, I use 
uh, plant-based proteins in my smoothie in the morning. So my first meal of the day after my 16-hour fast, after my workout, I usually make a smoothie. Um, that changes with the day. You know, I'll put some green leafy vegetables. I love kale and spinach. Put in like half of a banana, sometimes some pineapple, um, sometimes some blueberries and my pea plant-based protein. And then sometimes I'll do like a blueberry almond butter smoothie. So it just depends, but I really love my smoothie in the morning. Like that's my first meal of the day and it like packs a punch with, you know, nutrition and will hold me off for the next um, eight hours as I'm racing around with my kids getting to, off to work and kind of doing my procedures and seeing my patients um, throughout the day. Um, so I don't snack on those days that I work. When I do snack on like weekends or, you know, when I'm, I'm not doing my intermittent fasting the four days out of the week, um, when I do do my intermittent fasting, it's those four days and then the three days, um, I'll usually have, you know, some type of fruits or veggies um, for a snack. I love um, hummus with fresh vegetables. That's always like a favorite snack of mine. Nuts and berries, um, blueberries. I love, I think that they're one of the most um, important superfoods um, just for not only your skin, immunity, um, cognitive ability, antioxidants, anti-cancer, anti-tumorigenic and mitogenic potential. Blueberries are, I feel like, one of my favorites and um, I really try to incorporate them every day into my diet. Um, do I rely on supplements? I don't say I rely on supplements. I do take supplements. I have a whole other YouTube video on supplements. It's been a minute, so I should probably do a newer revised video on supplementation. Um, I do mix it up because there's so many supplements that I feel are necessary, and I do have a sense of stomach, so I can't take too many supplements at one sitting. Um, I'm a huge fan of Symbiotica. Sherebine is one of, one of our very close friends, and I adore him. If you don't follow him, you should. I love his whole brand and his company um, for clean, um, effective supplements um, that are sourced, um, that are not outsourced and are homegrown and um, just the whole ethos of that company. So I do, um, I do love the Symbiotica supplements and I will do, I do other supplements as well. Um, and in, in fact, not to give too much information away, okay, I'm not even going to go there, but there may be a skin supplement coming soon because skin supplements are really important and can have a huge impact on the skin as well. And knowing which ones work and which ones don't, which ones aren't absorbed, which ones are, is a whole nother video and rabbit hole to go down. Um, but I do, you know, take my supplements um, every day and um, again, just eat a clean diet and don't really focus on my protein intake or my macros, just eating fresh clean foods, green leafy vegetables, the brighter the color, the better um, the food, and just avoiding things like dairy, um, inf inflammatory foods, um, gluten, and um, you know things that can uh, have a negative impact on your health and your skin is something that I adhere to every day as a lifestyle. So another thing that I wanted to mention is that I've actually given up coffee this year and have just switched solely to tea. So I used to be a coffee drinker, you know, all throughout getting through medical school and residency and being a mom of a toddler and a newborn when I was still in my residency and fellowship, of course I relied heavily on coffee because I wasn't sleeping a lot and I needed that extra boost and that caffeine. But this year in 2023, I actually have just stopped coffee altogether and just drink tea. So I usually will have a green tea in the morning um, and then sometimes I have it before bed and I don't really mix it with anything. I'll just do like a chamomile um, or green antioxidant tea before bed and I have it in the morning too. And it really doesn't keep me up. I sleep just fine. Um, at night when I go to bed, even if I have tea before bed. Um, but again, have just given up on coffee and um, just rely solely on tea now. And tea actually has not only antioxidants, but green tea polyphenols, which I think are really important. They have a huge impactful anti-mitogenic potential, meaning like anti-carcinogenic, anti-mitogenic, and I don't even mean to get into the science of it, but I remember I actually did a paper on this in medical school. I published a research article on um, green tea po polyphenols and its decreased Increase incidence effect on skin cancer because in the cell cycle regulation phase of a cell there's several checkpoints there's the S phase there's I think it's the G1 the G2 and basically there there's mutations that can happen in skin cells and when they kind of get dysregulated that's when you have a neoplastic entity or a skin cancer whether it's a basal cell carcinoma squamous cell carcinoma melanoma and these checkpoints when they get mutated can lead to skin cancer and green tea polyphenols actually turn those off off, or when those mutations happen, it just basically deletes it and, and makes the cell not able to proliferate and produce a tumor, a skin tumor. So green tea polyphenols, I can't say enough about, and all the other antioxidants in teas actually have several select um, 
green tea polyphenols and antioxidants in my skincare products. So you apply those topically, but also ingesting them from within is really impactful for healthy skin and just for overall health in general too. So stopped coffee this year and now I just drink tea. So that's another thing that I've incorporated into my diet um, along with my intermittent fasting and on days where I'm not intermittent fasting, just eating clean and eating healthy. Okay, so now getting to the good part. What do I do in the office? What in-office procedures for body contouring and sculpting do I do? To back up before I answer that question, I pretty much have access to everything. Like in my 20 years of practicing, I've had exposure and access to all the tightening devices, all the body contouring devices, all the fat dissolving devices, all the muscular um, volume volumizing treatments, everything you can think of under the sun. So I know what works and what doesn't. And when I see something relaunched that didn't work before and I know still doesn't work in today's world, I'm just kind of like, okay, well, I'll just respectfully decline to comment on that procedure. And if I don't recommend it or have it in my office, it's not something that I feel is worth it for my, for my patients or even for myself. All the procedures that I do in my office, I perform on myself and wouldn't recommend it to you guys if it wasn't something that I did on myself or believed in. Backing up after I had my second baby, um, I remember doing cool sculpting and I was super overzealous with cool sculpting. It, you know, was fairly new at the time and I remember doing several treatments of it. And I remember, you know, right after pregnancy, skin laxity is an issue for anyone, I feel like. You know, I was, gosh, I was in my early 30s, and I remember the draw of the machine sucking my skin in, and I remember, yeah, it dissolved the fat. I had a full-on six-pack, and you can see all my abdominal muscles, but I had all this, like, lax skin on top of it. And I think maybe I was a bad candidate because I just had a baby, and, you know, with pregnancy, your skin stretches, and it changes, and the elasticity is a little bit, you know, altered, obviously, but I also was seeing it in some of my patients too. So cool sculpting is not a device I have. A lot of my colleagues have it and recommend it. Um, but I feel that if you're not the right patient candidate for it, and that could be due to your age, your skin quality and texture, or other procedures that you've had, or other you know confounding factors, it has a risk of side effects of skin laxity, uneven distribution, um, and just side effects that you know you wanted to stay away from, like idiopathic or not idiopathic, iatrogenic adipose hypertrophy, and that's a medical term for growing fat in areas after fat is melted. So I had a patient, I remember when I was a fellow, who we did cool sculpting on her abdomen, but then she had increased fat right above the treatment area. So the area that was treated had decreased fat, but then she got paradoxical hypertrophy of her fat, like increased fat stores in areas around it. So it almost looked like this cookie cutter, less than ideal um, outcome, and then we used Kybella to kind of feather around the edges and fix it. I love Kybella. I did a whole video last week on Kybella, and I think it's a great tool to have in our toolbox because it helps fix other side effects from other procedures like liposuction or cool sculpting or treatments where you reduce fat, but then you get like a less desirable outcome because it's not smooth, it's not natural looking, or you have increased fat growth in another area because you treated a different area, which no one wants, but Kybella is you know, your rescue, <laughs> your savior when that happens. So I do a lot of Kybella for body contouring and just to eliminate stubborn areas of fat where diet and exercise alone don't target. I did a whole video on that, so I'm not going to talk about Kybella too much because I have the whole video dedicated to just that. But what I said in that video is it's a great first line treatment for areas where you just want to decrease that little area of fat that's stubborn. It's not going to be enough to get rid of a lot of fat, but just like the bra fat, the back fat, little medial thigh fat, areas on the abdomen that are just stubborn that that fat doesn't go away with diet and exercise. And just remember, as we get older, the skin just or the fat distribution changes in our body. You'll be like, I never had that back roll before, or I never had fat on my knees before. What's up with this? And that's where Kybella is good for, okay, let's just erase that and just minimize it and melt it away. There's really low risk, no real side effects. Um, I really am happy with um, Kybella and the services that we provide our patients with Kybella in the office. I've done it on myself just before we went to a festival. Um, this last week in Cabo, I posted it. I was running around in my bikini and I had kybella kind of like my flank side area. I had M sculpted my booty and my abs. And you know, I'd, I'd done Sculptra before about a year ago, which I still have those results in my booty for increased volume there. And it's just these minimally invasive procedures that really can kind of contour the body and just make you feel comfortable in whatever stage of life you're in. Because things change when you're younger, when you're older, anywhere in between with weight fluctuations, with diet change, 
changes, with changes in your hormone levels. Our body and fat distributions are always changing. And so sometimes if you have like a big dramatic surgery, also say you have like a BBL with full liposuction fat transfer, and then you have a weight gain or weight loss, things change and shift as you get older no matter nothing's ever static so doing little minimally invasive low risk procedures that have a great outcome and you know uh, amazing results are safe effective and i feel are more valuable than doing some big old crazy procedure that you can't reverse or that you may risk having a complication from so in summary that's kind of my you know my regimen just eating clean intermittent fasting on days where I'm at work, um, making exercise and working out a priority and things that I need to work on, I think I could definitely have more time for meditation and sleep. I have never really gotten much sleep my entire life, so maybe that's just how I'm engineered. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I know when I was in medical school, you know, and even in college as a pre-med and then in residency, like it really benefited me because I really could operate high functioning on very little sleep, which was great, but I don't know if that's the healthiest thing. And now that I'm older and now that I have time to do that, I feel like I personally need to dedicate more time to sleep because that's when your body recovers, that's when your body is fighting off disease and cancer and restoring and regenerating. And I that's a personal goal for me is to dedicate more time to get seven to eight hours of sleep if I can. And that's just something that I have to work on. And even, like I said, when I was younger, I didn't get much sleep and I didn't work out as much because I didn't have the time, but I always um, made sure that, you know, eating clean and, you know, drinking plenty of water and living a healthy lifestyle uh, was important to me. So I think wherever you are in your life, whatever phase you are in your life, whatever works for you at that time and putting your health first, I think is most important. Um, a healthy mind and healthy body is beautiful, but it's also, you know, the key to longevity. And, and one last thing I wanted touch on is drinking water hydration status of the body not only manifests with beautiful skin but for overall health renal function liver gi everything and i feel that drinking two liters of water a day is very helpful it's hard to do sometimes um, especially when you're my size i weigh about 100 pounds i mean it's not easy for me to get two liters of water in a day but what i do is i have my hydro flask that has a liter of water and i have to drink that before noon and whatever if you know if, say it's almost noon and i still have half a liter left and i haven't drink i just down it and then i refill it at noon and then i'd have to drink the rest of it before i go to bed at night and then usually i'll drink that and then some so at least i know i'm getting my two liters of water but i think that's really really important and um you know underutilized in overall health we're always talking about our diet and our sleep and our workout but drinking plenty of water flushes out the system and is um, really important as well so drink your water wear your sunscreen work out as much as you can eat clean and do what makes you happy because overall that's the key to longevity and overall health. I hope this helps you guys. Let me know what else you guys want to hear about. Thank you for hanging out with me for so long and I love you.